So let me tell you a story about the worst night of astrophotography that I've ever had so far. So first of all, I'm finally to the point where I'm getting my, my equipment to uh, kind of work properly and I'm starting to get some, some decent images. And it can be really frustrating because you look at some of the YouTubers that have been doing this for a long time and they get these amazing shots and you're like, how are they doing that? It's some kind of witchcraft. Are they actually editing Hubble data and just trying to pawn it off on their own? I don't know, but uh, you know that's not what they're doing, but sometimes it feels like that because I can't get anywhere close to that. But I'm finally starting to get to the point where there's some light at the end of that tunnel and some of my stuff is coming out pretty good. And um, but man, I just, I ran into a problem last night and I always have problems every night, but this one, I've never had so much trouble that it has actually prevented me from capturing any sort of image. And that's where I was uh, last night. So my primary goal tonight is to see if I can nail down a problem that I've been having with my autofocuser. I purchased one of those uh, ZWO uh, autofocus motors and uh, I, I went, with, installed it no problem, um, adjusted for my, my backlash and, and all the things that, that the YouTube and, and the internet forums tell you to do, but for some reason, uh, I just can't get it to work, not consistently anyway. I'll manually focus my stars to pretty close to pinpoint and then tell it to run the autofocus routine like 10 minutes later, it'll take that pinpoint that I started with and stretch it into this, this, this hideous donut shape that's not even close to being in focus. And it does that a huge percentage of the time. And then when it finally will get my stars in focus, then I'm like, don't touch it. It, it's, it finally worked, leave it there. And when I go on the forums and when I check the YouTube and everything, I can't find anyone else that seems to have this problem. It seems like everybody else is saying, this thing works great, I push the button, it just works. Um, I should mention that I'm using this with the ASI Air Pro, so I'm using its autofocus routine. So uh, if you're using um, a laptop or something, then you might not be having this issue at all. It's, you're using different software. So that's my primary goal, is to make this thing work. And if I can also get a shot of the Omega Nebula, uh, that would be cool too. So I start off, uh, hook everything up, get the telescope balanced and, and run through my uh, polar alignment and and that that polar alignment is the last time something will work properly that night um, that worked no trouble at all I, as a matter of fact I, I I don't think I've ever had a problem with the polar alignment feature on the ASI Air Pro it is spectacular and fast and works really well it started off uh, I like to set up early uh, while the sun's still up. I don't like to set things up in the dark because I'm losing valuable night sky time. And it's just harder to put things together when it's, when it's difficult to see what you're doing. So I, I start about an, an hour before uh, dark and I'm getting everything all put together. And uh, my filter drawer has this little magnet that uh, when you slide the drawer in, magnet holds it closed. And for the last couple of times I've used it, when I open the drawer, the magnet kind of pops out. And so I was like, I got a little bit of time. I'm just going to pop a little dot of glue in that and uh, uh, prevent it from coming out anymore. I don't want to drop it and lose it. So I go uh, take it out and put it back in a few times. No problem at all. Put a little drop of super glue on there, go to stick it back in. And it, that magnet will not fit back in its hole for some reason. It's like somehow bigger than the hole. I just test fit it like 52 times, but it's not fitting now. And uh, so I'm getting really frustrated. I'm getting super glue all over my fingers. And so that's a whole thing. And uh, finally I get to the point, um, it's starting to get dark now and my telescope's still not hooked up because this was just supposed to take a few, few seconds, a drop of glue, that's all it was supposed to be. So now I'm out in the garage and drilling that hole out to make it bigger, finally get the magnet inside of there and finally get back out to start setting up the rest of the telescope. Now in the dark, I'm wasting time. I wanted to record uh, my efforts that night uh, just in case a video might come out of it, but all of my neighbors have dogs and all of those dogs were barking that night. There's three dogs on the one side, there's one dog uh, catty corner of me, two dogs directly behind me, another dog catty corner, and a giant dog 
to my right, and they're just all barking all night long. So much that it would just totally contaminate to any audio that I was trying to record. So I was unable to film anything that night. My neighbor with the big dog also has the world's brightest floodlight uh, that he's just leaving on on his back porch just all night. It was on all night long and there wasn't anybody in his backyard um, taking advantage of that light. So uh, that was frustrating. I have a Samsung A7 tablet. It's about maybe a year old or so. And um, I had bought it to replace my old tablet that was really aging badly. It was really slow. And I was really disappointed to see that this brand new tablet is, it is also very slow. I do not recommend the A series Samsung tablets. They're about 120 bucks or so. Um, and they're just horrible. I, I primarily use it to drive this telescope and watch uh, YouTube videos and stuff while I run on the treadmill. And it does both of those things very badly. So if you're using a tablet to do anything, don't get the A series from Samsung, just the worst. Um, the way this works is you can tap these little up and down buttons on the, um, on the interface to drive your, your focus motor. Well, uh, part of that tablet's problem is that it, its touch screen is very insensitive. So you can, you can punch that thing and it still won't detect your touch. And so for every 10 little taps of the plus button, I can get it to focus like one little step. And so it's just super frustrating to get that thing to even manually focus. So I finally get it there, uh, run through the autofocus routine. Of course, it's not working. I wrestle with that for hours and finally decide, you know what, if I have any hope of getting any actual pictures tonight, um, I'm just, I'm just gonna have to focus manually because this isn't going to work. So I finally focus it manually. Um, and then I now need to get my tracking camera in focus. So I'm using an off-axis guider. I'm trying to focus the guide camera and I can't get it in focus either. I know that the main camera is now in focus, but now I'm having trouble with, with the guide camera. Um, and that's a manual adjustment. So I'm adjusting it. I'm adding spacer rings and removing spacer rings and stuff, thinking that there's a back focus issue. I've never had this problem before. I have used the telescope at this focal length many times and have never had this problem. But tonight, for some reason, it's an issue. Uh, I finally get it most of the way into focus uh, where at least it should be able to at least guide. Um, and then the software doesn't want to let me choose a guide star. It wants to choose its own. And of course it's focusing on hot pixels. And so I'm trying to tell it to use this star, use this star. And it just refuses to acknowledge that I want what I want to do. Finally, after wrestling with that, I finally get it to follow the star that I've selected and my guiding is horrible. It, I'm getting like 60 arc seconds uh, for my guide. Usually I'm sub one arc second, like 0.5. And I, it's just all over the place. I can't figure out what the problem is. And I wrestled with that for like another hour. And then finally I just give up and say, you know what? I'll just go without guiding because I've got a really good polar alignment. So, and my mount is really solid. So I should be able to do this for what I'm doing. It should be good enough. So I'm just like, I'm not gonna guide. So finally I've got everything uh, hooked up as, as good as I can and I try to connect Sky Safari and point to my target. And I, I can't get Sky Safari to connect to the ASI Air Pro. It just says the mount isn't connected. Um, I have had this problem before. So I go in and I check the usual culprits like my IP address and, and the, the port and stuff. And just none of the usual stuff is working. And then finally it, it works. And it ended up what the problem was, was absolutely nothing. I didn't change any settings at all. I didn't change anything on the hardware. After wrestling with it for about half an hour, it just finally decided to work. And that's really frustrating when it's not working for no reason at all. So I was super not happy, but at least it's finally working again. So I, I slew the mount to my target. And as the telescope is slewing to the target, the power plug comes undone shuts the whole rig down. 
So I plug the power back in, I start all over. But the problem this time is, is that as soon as I plug the power back in, the mount wants to resume its slewing operation. But the ASI error is, is still booting up and uh, I, I don't know, the mount is just doing its own thing. So it, it's pointing and it's a just about to hit it, hit the tripod leg when I have to like, and my hand controller is not responding either. I'm hitting the cancel button on the hand controller and that's not working. I had to unplug it, loosen the mount and like readjust it because it's about to hit the floor. Uh, so I readjust it again, turn it back on, and it starts just automatically, as soon as it gets power, just automatically slews back to the ground and it just keeps doing this. And so at this point, it's, it's past midnight. I haven't gotten even a single picture yet. And now I'm gonna have to, I don't even know what is, I'm just gonna have to like completely shut everything. I, I don't know. I don't even know what's causing this. But at this point, I just decide, forget it. It's just not in the cards tonight and I just pack it all up and I got absolutely no pictures. Every single thing that could have gone wrong that night did. And so the reason that I wanted to tell you this story is that uh, I've shown you some of my pictures and they're not as great as a lot of the people out there, but they're starting to come out good. And if you're in that, that place where you are brand new and your pictures are coming out really crummy and you look at what I've been doing and you're saying, what is that guy doing that, that makes his pictures look so much better than mine? Just know that I am in the same place that you are and having the same kinds of problems that, that you do. And I know that you're having nights like this also, and it's just something we have to push through. So what I wanted to encourage you with is that just don't give up because there are certainly the, the, these kinds of nights that just want to make you throw in the towel. Uh, just, just stick with it uh, because the nights when things do work and you get that amazing shot, that really does make it all worth it. And if nothing else, just to be out at night under the stars uh, is, it's a humbling and spiritual experience. And all the more so when you can just relax in peace and all your neighbor's dogs aren't barking. It can be a very peaceful experience. And uh, so yeah, that's all, that's all I just wanted to share that with you. Stick with it. It's worth it. We'll get there in the end. If you know how to fix my focuser, please leave me a comment because uh, I don't know what I'm doing. All right, clear skies.